Buen día. Good morning. I'm Sebastián Gómez. As Diego was saying previously, with Diego Scafo, we are part of the team of research and development. Both will be continuing the former presentation about the conversational ecosystem. We'll talk about conversational interfaces with GenXs. This is the original title of our presentation. A few days ago, we were talking with customers, friends, distributors, who were asking us, what are you currently doing in this field? And we said, we're preparing a generator for the chatbot. Are you going to announce it? Yes, we are on Wednesday. What's the name of this? presentation. It's called Interfaces with GenXs. And why don't you call it Presenting or Introducing the Chatbot Generator? Well, that's a good title, we said. So we changed. Well, look at what we did. Uh, we changed the title. And now it's called Introducing GenXs Chatbot Generator. This is the first chatbot generator by GenXs. So this really responds to the content. And uh, I will start the presentation going back in time. And I will talk about GX26. Last year, we did our first experience with chatbot. We introduced Rudy. That was Rudy's first version. Rudy was a bot, handmade bot, using C Sharp, using the Microsoft framework. And Rudy basically, well, this is Rudy in Messenger. You could ask him where the rooms are located. You could ask him more or less what he is asked today. Where is the cloakroom? Where will my next um, presentation B and so on. So why did we do that? We had two objectives. One was to measure the engagement to see whether people were attracted by this interaction with the bot. Then the technical feasibility uh, to check if it worked. One thing is to have a demo, uh, but we wanted to see it really uh, in the field. And uh, we were very lucky. We had over 1,600 questions during the three days of conference. And when I prepared this presentation, I re was remembering what happened last year. We got all together to evaluate the event, and we thought that 1,600 was a very interesting number. In this event, by Monday noon, we had 1,500 interactions with the bot, so we have improved the mark. And I, I was very happy. That's a good response. The engagement was satisfactory. And in terms of the technical feasibility, we were very satisfied. We analyzed the batch of questions. They are all anonymous, don't worry. And it showed that 85% accuracy was achieved uh, in the answers, which is very good. Now, answering correctly is difficult. Some people asked uh, Rudy, will it rain tomorrow? That's something he cannot anticipate. He's not trained for that. So if he answers, I don't know, um, it's also correct in a way. This is some of the input we received. Where is the bathroom? Will it rain tomorrow? Where's the Picasso room? What's an Elias phone number? This question was the vedette. An Elias is not the vedette. Now, looking for material, last year we had good results. We'll do a bot generator. We'll integrate with the large uh, players in the market. Last year, we used Watson and Microsoft, we, Watson from IBM. And we used different services to solve different scenarios. Uh, 
looking for material, I found this article by Dan Grover. And to me, this is part of a category Jodal always mentions. Oh, this guy is intelligent. He said just what I was thinking about. He says, bots won't replace apps. The best applications will replace app. The best will replace other applications. And in this case, I was looking for bad practices of how to develop a bot. When this all started, there was an explosion uh, in terms of bots. All large companies started creating their own bots. I remember Messenger, and the bot would only give you news. You ask him what happened today, and they, he would launch news. Then I found this. I was looking for images to show you this example, and I found this. Uh, the order a pizza fallacy. Somehow, providers give you the example of ordering a pizza as the best example. And it's not a good example. It's not a good example at all. Because this is a conversational interface, and I have to write all the time. I brought another case. This is part of the article that I mentioned. The image here is, uh, was in Microsoft Bot Framework. It said, now you will be able to write to the bot to order a pizza. The tabs were not included in the Microsoft page. And by the end of ordering a pizza, the user had to press 73 tabs, which is ridiculous. Um, this, this does not even mention the size. And this is an example of the same order for pizza in the WeChat application, the Chinese messenger application or the number one in China, as Gaston was saying. This has a hybrid component. Someone says, I want to order a pizza. This is the official application of Pizza Hut in China in WeChat. Someone says, I want to order a pizza. And different menus deploy something very similar to a native app. And this man said that with 16 tabs in 19, with 16 tabs, he can get to order a pizza. Uh, even payment is included in the 16 tabs. So we believe that this is the road we should follow. We don't believe that because everybody is doing chatbot, everything will turn into a chatbot and you will have to write all the time and receive text in response. So part of this is what we did this year. And with Rudy this year, we integrated Rudy to the app of the event. We already had some panels prepared by the people who designed the event application to show the data of a speaker. If you ask Rudy, who's Nicolas Jodal? Instead of giving all the text describing something, he can show the panel that we have already designed for the speaker with a picture, with a bio and conference. Then, when you go back from that panel, you can read it again. And we wanted simply that, to have that kind of interface that is rich, that can be obtained by maintaining a fluid conversational interface with the power of the natives. How did we do this with GenNexus? Diego will explain it. Well, how we did it is the novelty. What we did was a chatbot generator. But it's not as simple as that. It's not a matter of sitting down and doing it. It requires research. There's a point in time when we have to choose the players 
the providers of the conversational services? How can they facilitate the chatbot? What will people ask when they um, interact with a bot? So we decided to uh, choose an entry point, and the entry point is a new pattern. We know that uh, we have the different kinds of patterns in GeneXus, but now we will have a conversational pattern. It will be independent, it will not depend on objects, and to create it, we will have to do a control N. We will create a new object, and this is the pattern category. We have conversational, we will create it, and the new object will uh, allow us to see different pattern elements. When I mention different elements, I mean if we talk about a new pattern that is in charge of a new type of interface, we will have new elements of this pattern. So what are the new elements? We could start by saying we will have conversational objects, the objects we will be able to reference from the pattern. We also have flows. The flows will represent the intention of the user. That is to say, I want to buy something. And this will start a conversational flow that will lead to something. In the middle, we will have data required. So one element will depend on conversational objects. Then we will also have trigger messages that trigger the flows. These are the messages with which we will train our intention. The message will be related to the flow. And we also have general messages, the messages that provide answers when an intention is completed. The four elements are new. They will be related to the pattern. I think the most robust element is going to be the conversational object. Why? Because it represents objects we will work with. These objects do exist in GenXus. We already have them. And we'll see which are the ones we are working with currently. We have data providers, we have procedures, we have transactions, and we have web panels. And we also work with SD panels. Now, I tell you all this, but what we need to do is how the pattern behaves when we integrate one of these objects to the pattern or cross-reference it. And let's start with the examples of data providers and procedures. For our pattern, the behavior will be similar. In, ex in order to explain this properly, we are going to show you an example. Let's say that we have a data provider and we're working with the hospital's uh, knowledge base. The data provider will tell us who is the doctor who is on duty for a certain uh, field in a certain date. So what we would expect from the bot is that when the user tells us we want to know who is the doctor that will be in traumatology department on October 5, it tells us who will be on duty. Or if we just say who is the doctor who will be on duty, the bot will ask us, but from which field? So we have a conversation on object that has a reference to the data provider, and this automatically has created a flow for the conversational object and the fields, and also a node. And these attributes, specialty and date, were taken directly from the data provider. And what we did was to uh, add by hand a message of what is required. So what the bot has to tell us when we are not saying the specialty or the date, for example. And also, we have the view. It has seen that there will be a field for the name of the doctor, for example, and at the bottom we have a template that says that it's going to be set as a text message. That is to say, that will be the format of the reply. And then we'll see which other options we may have. Another one of the objects with which we work is the transactions. 
for transactions, what we are going to have by default is the actions that give us the possibility of updating or deleting or looking for something. So in this case, we have these four flows, the insert, the delete, etc., which create the fields that are required in order to do the insert, etc., but it, it didn't fit in here, so I didn't put them. There is another object or other objects that have a behavior completely different, which are the SD panels and the web panels. Why do I say this? If we look at things carefully, you will realize that the rendering, the response of the intention, in this case I want to see a doctor, will be the rendering of the panel itself that we referenced. We had an ST panel that showed us the information about a doctor, and it receives as an entry parameter the name of the doctor. So when we receive the name of the doctor, we show the data. What we did in this case was to integrate in this instance to this panel, and we have the flow in which we have the data that is required, and the response when we are communicating with the bot will be the rendering of the panel. And we can see it also in the example that Sebastian showed when he said, who is Nicolas Jodal, and showed a panel with the data of the speaker and the KB, and we had a similar panel. Now, we know how the pattern functions in general lines and which are the objects we will be able to work with, the elements we will see, but when we say the name generate, these are internal elements of the pattern and that are proper to the objects, but not of the services that will be useful to have a chatbot. So let's see what we generate. And uh, what are we generating? On the one hand is the bot backend. That is to say all of the services we will need so that the chatbot can communicate with the objects that we referenced in the conversational pattern. So we have the backend, the user interface that by default is going to be there. We will have the chat for smart devices and the chat for the web. We will have the grid, etc. cetera, uh, in the panels. And if I talk about user interface, you will probably wonder what, what happens with the platforms you mentioned, Messenger, etc. Well, a big part of the problem is solved by the providers themselves. In the case of API, it gives us integration with a lot of them, and in the case of Watson, with a specific one. And for those who can't find a solution with the providers, we will provide the solution. And the other thing we are generating is the struct are the structures that the service provider needs in order to know the intentions, the entities and the dialogues that we will have in our chatbot. We are going to create a file that has this whole configuration and this will depend on the format of the service. And this file may be uploaded in our instance in the IDE of the provider we have chosen. When we have generated all these, we have a bit all, and they are operating. As Sebastian said, and as we saw, we believe that the path of in conversational interface is not only uh, sending and receiving messages. We have to enrich it. We saw it with the web panel, for example, when we said that the answer is rendering the same object. But in fact, rendering this object is available not only for the data provided on the web panel. All of the objects that are compatible, and you remember the new template I mentioned, will offer the option of rendering them as a component. So you'll tell me if 
in a data provider, I say we are going to render it as a component. Where does the panel come from? The panel did exist before, but Genexus automatically will give them the panel analyzing the object and the fields that we have put are the visualization of the response. One example, if we have a data provider that renders an SDT, automatically we are going to create a panel that has a grid and we will be able to serve all the items that were returned as a result of the query. And this can be visualized not only like this, but we'll also have the option of saying, yes, we want the rendering to be integrated in the chat or not. In the first example, the option was integrated, and the option that was integrated was the possibility of having uh, the message at a certain point in time. It would offer me a list of results, and it opened the panel, for example, about the conference that had already been generated. So the difference is that in this panel, we don't keep the possibility of sending a message. We have to go back. So these are two different ways of visualizing the panels. And it's something that we will be able to choose in the pattern, and we'll be able to say how we want to see it. So examples of this generator through the Anclarita were generated, both of them with this generator. What you see on the screen is the conversational pattern for Rudy. And we took the KB from the knowledge base the, of the events application and reference elements that already existed and create some in certain cases because we wanted to cover consultations that were not there before, so we had to create something. But we could have done it only with what with what already existed. So uh, this is for Rudy and Clarita uh, worked similarly. The difference is the user interface. In the case of Rudy, it's done through the chat itself, and uh, in the case of Clarita, the interface was developed by a different company. This allows us to uh, have a speech to taste and test and uh, talk to her, not only send messages. Clearly, they were generated with the same generator. We said we were generating uh, three layers, the backend, the user interface, and in the third place, the configuration. In this case, they were generated with the same things, and we only changed the user interface. We could have had, for example, the two user interfaces linked to the same bot, or we could have put one and leave the other, or, and take out the other easily. And the question now is, what do we gain by using this generator? Whereas, as we said, we, gener we generated the backend, the user interface, the configuration, and you don't need to worry about programming these services or the user interface, or for learning how the provider you chose functions, uh, Watson or API, AI, Alex in the future. All this will be available to train the bot and make the interaction with the users as accurate as possible. And also, you will be able to focus on the design of your conversational interface. So you will be able to save a lot of time in the development of those things we need to make the functioning better and more accurate. Thank you, Neil. So to sum up, we did what is sometimes called known as dog fooling. We took from our own generator to do some things, but there are scenarios we are not covering. And as this event finishes, we are going to modify certain things, but we want more scenarios. 
we want to know which scenarios you, our users, want to solve. So we invite you to visit genesis.com slash Tiro, and you can register in the beta of the Tiro version, as Gaston said. It doesn't mean that the bot generator is going to be released together with Tero. When we think that it is mature enough, then we can put it in the line of the of version 15. There is also a bot channel where we can have a more fluent conversation. You can register, as I said, in this Slack channel. And everything is in genexus.com slash Tero. So I invite you to uh, add your names to the beta and help us improve this generator.